Hi everyone, it's Rabbi Adam Law with Wanderings, and this is a Torah video. Today is Rosh Chodesh Elul, and the Parsha is Shoftim. Today's topic title is called, Don't Believe in God Too Much. I like throwing out some controversial titles, but you'll see why I chose this one. And it's a little follow-up to a video I made on Tisha B'Av, a, a video called, Is God Bad? And there I also made a controversial title, the idea being to get us to think about theological issues in a deep way, while also giving us some practical takeaways. Today is Rosh Chodesh Elul, which is one month before Rosh Hashanah. This is our preparation time. Capital letters of Elul spell Ani the Dodi the Dodi Li. I am to my beloved, my beloved is to me. And it says this time, we read it in, the, um, in Yeshayahu, that be close to God when God is close. Call out to God when God is close. This is a time where we start feeling we start thinking about things. The summer is coming to an end. We start thinking about our place in the world. So there's a lot to think about. A lot of people have been in crisis. Thank God things are getting better. But at Elul time is a time where we should be thinking about what really matters in the world. Because we know in Rosh Hashanah, everything is judged. The whole world is judged. It's a Rosh Hashanah for the whole world. And the whole world comes to God's judgment at that time, including us individuals. However, there's a closest to that, because we know that he who, who God loves, he rebukes. It's a pasuk, and the idea is that those who we're close to are the ones that God has the most, let's say, careful calculation of their actions. It's interesting, if you look at the form of God's names that come during this time, you can, if you look at the Nusach Sfard Siddur, according to the Kabbalah, there are different permutations of God's name. We know God's name has a yud, followed by a hey, followed by a vav, followed by a hey. That name is pronounced as a shem, because we don't know the real pronunciation. There's four letters, yud, hey, vav, and then another hey. They can also be permutated in 12 different permutations, and each one of these permutations is a certain light that permeates the month. Each month has a basic mazel or spiritual light that is connected to it. This month is the month of the Basula, the Virgin. And Elul is the month where the uh, form of God's name, the Yud, He, Vav, and final He, is permutated in this following form. He, He, Vav, Yud. Meaning is the, the, the two He's are in front and, it, and the Vav and the Yud are in the back as well as the name Akaye, which is Aleph He Yud He, which is also an, uh, a powerful name of God, is also permutated in this month similarly. So the last letters of these permutations are the, which is the He, suddenly become in the front, and we see a double up there. Meaning is, the Yud we say is closest to God, because that's God's first letter of his name. And the He is the one that's farther away. So this seems to contradict this idea that God is very close. But what I want to say is God is close to those who call on him. Meaning is this month, the spirit of this month and also Tishrei is the spirit of us reaching up to God. It's us doing tshuva, us acting in the world, us putting our influence and our thoughtfulness in the world. That is what it's about, us returning to God, us making amends with people. The holidays, Pesach, Shavuos and Sukkot just represent God giving complete spiritual undivided light into the world, whereas the, the high holidays represent us reaching up to God, us making an effort to connect to God when we know the world is about to go into judgment. And that's why the permutations of the name are these last letters, hey, hey, at the beginning, because God arranges the world in a way that the world needs to come to judgment. And just like any CEO of a Hav deal, sometimes he needs to make a periodic check-in with the world, that everyone should check in to see what their value and use in the world is. And that's with the power of Rosh Hashanah. And that's what we start this season, Elul, where we start thinking about this, our relationship to God. And neither Dodi, but Dodi Li, Elul. Right? We start thinking about that at this time. Of course, we know at Yom Kippur, God turns that judgment into mercy, into rachamim, into mercy. But first, we have to go through the stages of judgment to see what next year is going to be. 
Speaking of reversal of names, the Caduceus Levi points out that the first month, according to one calculation, is the month of Passover, Nisan, which is called, also called Chag HaAviv. And we see there, Aviv starts with the olive base, meaning as that represents the miracles, the light of the holidays, particularly Pesach, represent God's miracles in the world. And that's what it's olive base, meaning it's coming from the beginning to the end, from up to below. Whereas Tishrei, which is the next month, the month of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, and then Sukkot, which represents judgment, is the opposite. It's Tav, Shin, Resh, which is the end of the, of the alphabet, and it goes backwards. Again, showing that these months are about us returning to God and getting a grasp of our actions and how we fit into the world. Meaning, it's not just about God's oneness filling the universe, the light of God, in the world and how he's choosing things. We also have to realize that we have actions and choices and how our effects in the world come from the actions that we do and that comes from our belief system. What we believe about ourselves in the world is gonna influence our actions and that's gonna influence the results. God is always a factor, but we also have to realize that free will is the most basic understanding of the human condition. That and the combination of God's connection and Hashgacha, providence in the world. I want to tie that in with the Parsha. This Shabbos' Parsha is Parsha Shoftim, and this Parsha actually speaks a number of ways about how we balance finding God in this world versus letting things go. And one of the perfect examples of that is when it talks about prophecy, magic, divination, etc. It says in the Torah, I'm just going to read it in English, in chapter 18, starting in verse 9, it says, When you come to the land that the Lord your God gives you, you should not learn to act according to the abominations of these nations. There shall not be found among you one who causes son or daughter to pass through the fire, one who practices divination, an astrologer, one who reads omens, a sorcerer, or an animal charmer, one who inquires of Ov or Yudoni, or one who consults the dead. Anyone who does this is an abomination of Hashem. And because of these abominations, Hashem, your God, banishes the nations from before you. You should be wholehearted with the Lord your God. The Pasuk in Hebrew reads, Tamim tia im Hashem al kacha. You should be pure with your God. Meaning is, your relationship to the God needs to be pure. Not to get involved in all these outside ideas and trying to figure everything out through magic and idol worship and through divination and going to a, do a seance or any, a witch or anything like that, you're meant to have two ways to connect to God. One way is faith. Believing that God is involved and has the best for you, that is the most important thing to understand. But also that free will which we spoke about, which again gets into the title of my video, Don't Believe in God Too Much, which means you need to act accordingly at the right time. You need to use your rationality, your own intellect, which is the biggest gift that God has given you, to act appropriately and properly at a time. That's the balance between letting go and letting God do, and you acting using your rationality to come to the right conclusion. If you rely on one or the other, you're making a mistake. You need to understand which at which time is appropriate. Ultimately, we see that everything is from God. So we realize that when we do an action and we do it properly after investigating it, then you will know it's the right thing to do when you're absolutely sure of it. You need to use your rationality to think things through and remove all nagiyas, all sorts of outside influences from your thinking. What is God's will? What is the best for me to do in this moment? Then we will realize that it's all meant to be from God. God doesn't always want to just step in. Don't believe in God too much to the point where you're just waiting and waiting and waiting for a miracle to happen. Be a miracle. We see this Meforash and Parshas B'Shalach when the Yidden are at the sea and they're trapped at the sea and that the Egyptian chariots are about to crash into them, the army is about to destroy them, and they're davening and davening, and God says to Moshe, stop praying and, and move forward. Well, there's a, a sea there. There has to be a miracle for the sea to split. But yet for that sea to split, we have to show a willingness to do and act on our own, to go first, to go forward. I heard a story once about the Chazanish in Israel. And somebody once came to him and said, Rabbi, I, I davened, I learned, I, I did all the things I was supposed to do. Why did I not find my soulmate? Why am I still alone? And the Chazanish didn't say well, that was God's will. What he said was, you did find your soulmate. 
but you thought her nose was a little too big and you rejected her. It's pretty harsh, but the reality is, is we have to take responsibility for our own actions. When I was speaking about the, Maimonides' opinion about the fact that he sees the world in a theistic aspect, according to the more Nebuchadnezzar, that God is removed from the world, the world goes away, the world goes according to its way, and God will step in at propitious moments, but generally you have to act according to the way of the world. He talks there in, in section three, where he talks about the problem of evil. He says that everyone says there's so much evil and so much bad in the world. So he gives three different explanations about this. And one thing he says is, how much of this evil did you cause yourself? That's the Chazanisha story. Maybe the reason you're not married or you didn't get this thing is because you didn't do the effort. You didn't make the right decisions. God's not always going to step in because of the very important concept of free will. Sometimes you have to take responsibility for your own actions. Yes, after it happened, you have to accept the fact that you and God combined to make this happen, but you have to understand that you have a part in that. It's a, it's a, it's a fallacy to hold too much to the idea, and, and I love the Hasidic idea, the idea that everything is from God, everything is watched over, but the problem with this is it can lead us to paralyzation, that we don't act in the world at the proper time, and that we blame others, and we blame God, and we're mad at God. Yes, sometimes it's God's fault, but sometimes it's just the way the world is. And sometimes you made mistakes. You have to take responsibility for that. Maybe you met the right person, and maybe you, you blew it. I don't know why God does suffering to people, but one possibility is that we chose certain mistakes. Some of the things, surely some of the things that we did wrong, which were because of the actions that we did, we have to take the responsibility. And that's why I mean, and I say, don't believe in God too much. Meaning is, you believe in God, you have faith in God, but you also have to act at the proper time. You have the free will to do the right thing, and you have to analyze your past decisions. And that's why we have this process of this period, of the Elul period, of the 10 days of tshuva between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, is because we're supposed to analyze and take stock and look at what we've done in the past and fix ourselves for the future that we make better choices. Yes, it's comforting to understand that everything was exactly the way that God wanted it to be, but we also have to move forward and realize that we have to take responsibility for the mistakes that we made. Not everything's our fault, but some things are it. But some things are, and we have to take responsibility for that. Okay, so that's all a little negative, and I want to find a spiritual idea that's going to be inspirational. I discovered this beautiful Torah in the Me'ah Shaloch, the Rebbe, and it's in Masechus Rosh Hashanah, in the first volume. And it talks about the four different uh, Rosh Hashanahs during the year. There's actually four different New Years during the year. He says there are four belitos. There are four special times throughout the year where the newness is basically um, being energized in the world. The first of Tishrei, meaning Rosh Hashanah, it's, he says, No sin Hashem Yisbrach Chadashos. Hashem gives newnesses. New lights appear in the world. Therefore, a person needs to prepare himself or herself to receive. That's what this month is about, Elul, that we have to prepare ourselves to receive. So what are we going to receive? Chadashos, newnesses. Things change. Things are going to change on Rosh Hashanah. It's not going to be the same. Next year is a completely new reality. You must prepare to receive what Hashem will give. Because who knows what Hashem is going to give? It could be a whole new thing. We get in this mindset that we think everything is going to be the way it is because that's the way it was. It's not true. Hashem is every day renewing creation. And particularly in Rosh Hashanah, He creates a whole new reality for all of the world. Therefore, you must prepare yourself to receive Yeshuos, even salvations. Now, a lot of us are stuck in a rut, thinking everything's the same. It's always going to be the same. It's not going to change. That's where this concept of a Yeshua, of a salvation, that Hashem can send salvations into the world. And this is what I want to point out, the next line. It says, Hainu af shahu nifla misichlo. Even something that's above our intellect. Hashem is capable of doing something above our intellect. He doesn't say some crazy miracle is going to fall from the heaven, the base of Mikdash is going to fall from heaven, or this amazing job or person is going to fall into the world. All he says is, don't limit yourself to your seichel. Whether it's at a high level, your intellect, your, your connection is very high, or maybe it's not so high. Maybe you're in a little bit of despair of Yehush because of things going on. Don't limit it. Hashem can give you Yeshua, and that Yeshua may be miraculous, but also might just be, and it will for sure be, actually, he says here. 
Nifla Mesichla, wondrous, above, beyond what you can imagine. Maybe it's a little bit beyond, but the point I'm saying is we can't limit ourselves. We can't become a mitzeva. He also Ishbitzer also says here, don't don't set up a mitzeva. Al tekim lacham mitzeva. Don't make yourself a mitzeva. Don't make yourself so stubborn, so used to what the way things are, and even a vodas Hashem, that everything is supposed to be the way it's supposed to be. We see here that Hashem is going to be mechadesh every day, and particularly in Rosh Hashanah, new things. Even if it's just a little bit above where we're at, Hashem is going to do that. And that's why we have to prepare ourselves right now to receive that. And we receive that by getting rid of these thoughts, these ideas that everything is bad, is negative. And we do that by connecting to God and reaching out in supplications and tachanunim and slichos and forgiveness and working on ourselves through this time period. It says here, it ends up, As it says in Davin, Hashem is matzmiak yeshuos. Even though we don't see the Yeshua right now, Hashem is planting it, He's growing it, it's working. Things are happening, things are changing. Just like a plant slowly grows, so too is the Yeshua slowly grows. We see the situation around us is getting better slowly, and it will get even better completely. Gamzo Yavor, nothing is forever. So again, it's both having faith that God is making things happen, and also don't believe in God too much. Meaning is realizing that we are the author of much of what happens, and realizing that we did a lot. And even though God was helped us in that partnership, nevertheless, we have to take stock that we also chose many of the bad things that appear in our life, which means we can also choose the good things. Rosh Chodesh Tov, Chodesh Tov Elo, have a good Parsha Shof team, and a Shabbat Shalom. This is Rabbi Adam Law with Wanderings. Thank you very much. Have a great Shabbos and Chodesh Tov.